the cash register. It's a machine you probably don't think about too often. You most likely encounter one every day. These little machines take your hard-earned money and exchange don't it for goods you for and that. services. You can buy food with it, gas with it, toys with it, clothing with it, or degenerate weeb shit like this. Disgraceful! Like with any fine piece of machinery, there was a guy who invented it. A guy who designed it. A guy who programmed it. A guy who made it. And a guy who got that product out to market. And that's the topic of today's video. Cue the intro. Let's drive some motherfucking train! The National Cash Register Company, or NCR, was founded in 1884 by John Henry Patterson in Dayton, Ohio. He had bought a patent for a cash register in hopes to mass produce it. NCR would soon become a pretty big deal, and Patterson would build a large factory for his cash registers south of downtown Dayton. National Cash Register's big factory was initially served by the Cincinnati, Lebanon, and Northern Railway which later would become a part of the Pennsylvania Railroad system. Believe this, I would rather have a motherfucking sister working in a whorehouse than a brother working for the Pennsylvania Railroad! The factory soon rapidly grew, and a need arose for rail service within the factory. But there was an issue. Patterson shining took pride in the clean, cleanliness of his factory and surroundings, clean. and steam locomotives weren't well known for being clean. So what to do? Patterson would encounter the solution to his issue on a trip to Germany in 1909, where he discovered a locomotive with no fire. Wireless steam locomotives, as the name would suggest, had no fire. No brim! As opposed to regular steam locomotives, which had quite a lot of fire. Fireless locomotives used stored steam in their boilers and saved it for whenever they needed them. The locomotives could usually go around three or four hours on a single charge before having to go in for more steam. After Patterson returned from Germany, he would go to the Lima Locomotive Works and order his first fireless locomotive in 1909, an 040F named Rubicon. It would arrive at the factory in 1909 on a flatbed car and was followed by two others, South Park in 1910 and Dayton in 1913. Originally, these locomotives had a rather peculiar front end but eventually in their careers, they'd be masked up with a false front to make them look more conventional. The three engines immediately began work at the plant and were successful. However, they were soon put to the ultimate test. In March of 1913, the Great Miami River flooded, causing the adjacent city of Dayton to flood as well. The aptly named Great Dayton Flood would end up killing over 300 people and displacing many more. Patterson was keen to help with the relief efforts, turning his factory into a base of operation for the Red Cross and other organizations. He also leased the three fireless engines to the city to help clean up debris on the street. The locomotives ran along streetcar lines with open wagons to collect debris and trash from the middle of the road. After serving their city through the toughest of times, NCR's three little engines would make their way back to the factory to do what they were built to do, move cars around the plant. The locomotives had a handful of issues working at the plant, most notably visibility and braking. Despite these two pretty big issues, only one incident was ever recorded. This was in 1915, when a touring car backed into the Rubicon at the Main Street grade crossing. The only outcome of this incident was a slightly bent drive rod on Rubicon and a very unhappy motorist. Now that's a lot of damage! By 1964, Rubicon and her younger sisters had been working for over 50 years at National Cash Register and were beginning to show their age. With the rise of dieselization and the rising costs of maintenance, NCR would order a GE 50-ton switcher to replace the three fireless engines. It arrived by flatbed at the plant, very similar to how Rubicon arrived, and would later be painted into a green livery with New York Central-esque lightning stripes. With a simple handshake, the age of fireless locomotives in Dayton, Ohio came to an end and Rubicon would steam no more. But I'm not done yet! Quite amazingly, all three locomotives have survived into preservation. And 100% survival rate is pretty good amongst locomotive classes. 
The first of the triplets, Rubicon, had the good ending. It was donated to the Dayton History Museum at Carillon Park after its retirement, not too far away from her old stomping grounds. Then it was put inside a building on property, in which she was the primary exhibit for many years. That would all change in 2012, when the building was renovated to house an exhibit on the Dayton Flood in 1913, of which Rubicon would become the central piece, showcasing its role in the flood relief efforts. South Park, the second engine, got the bad ending. She was donated to the National Museum of Transportation in St. Louis, Missouri, where she was promptly forgotten about. Today the locomotive is in storage on property, not displayed to the general public, but instead sitting on a siding on the far end of the property, as nature slowly takes a toll on the poor engine. The South Park is definitely the worst of the three, and it's unknown if or when the museum plans to restore her. The youngest of the three triplets, Dayton, would fare a little better than South Park. After her retirement, she'd be donated to the Atlanta chapter NRHS, and, just like NCR itself, would find itself outside of Atlanta, more specifically in Duluth, Georgia, at the Southeastern Railroad Museum. The locomotive sat on a flatbed car by the time she arrived at the museum in 1967, until around 1994, when she was finally trained off and put back on rails. Unfortunately, Dayton is in pretty rough shape. The, the engine, not, not the city. The locomotive is owned as surplus by the museum, and they're looking for a buyer. It's a shame that NCR's fireless locomotives are largely forgotten about in American railroading history today, and forgotten about in general. These locomotives played a big part in the American railroading story. They were America's first fireless locomotives. They helped rescue a city in its time of need, and overall helped one of Dayton's most influential companies keep itself up and running. These locomotives had quite a story to tell, and I'm glad I was able to tell it today. And I hope that you have much more appreciation for the small little fireless locomotives of Dayton. Congratulations! You just spent six minutes of your free time listening to some random loser on the internet talk about a hundred year old trains that nobody cares about. Thank you very much for watching in all seriousness. This is a video I've wanted to make for quite some time and I'm glad I was able to get it out. I hope you did enjoy and I hope you learned something today. Be sure to leave a like if you did enjoy it, and leave a dislike if you didn't, that's alright. If you want to see another episode, press the subscribe button. I've got some more in the works. I think the Muskingum Electric Railroad would be a nice episode too. And have a good day.